Hello everyone and welcome to the second autumn 2024 update from Gauss Weather Vids. So here we go again, so I'd bring you more autumn data. This is a direct follow-on from last week. Last week we was looking at spring to autumn data. This week we're going to be looking at uh, May to autumn data. And I should get on with that for you in a second, just to say that the first video today was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. I'm going to be a 10 to 14 day, uh, but maybe a video upload, or I may try and do a live stream. So just watch your space on that. I'll let everybody know a little bit later on. Probably going to be another video upload, probably be another week before uh, we do a live. But I shall let everybody know anyway on the socials and uh, whatnot, but there will be like a 10 to 14 day of whether it's a video or a live coming up later on as well. Please like, share, subscribe on all today's videos and content, and thank you so much everybody for doing that. Thank you so to Richard for our amazing autumn updates gear. Thank you so much, Rich. I love it, love it, love it. Thanks so much for our wonderful, vibrant, and very, very colourful autumn updates gear and thank you so to shrine bruin as well richard short shrine bruin hashtag team gav shrine sorting out all of the ye years for us uh, as well so thank you so much to rich and to shrine right okay well let's get on with the uh second autumn update then uh we're looking at may data for this one we're going to be looking up CT and England aware of precipitation. We see that May CT uh, came out at 14.1, which was 2.9 degrees above 61, 99 average. It does place it within the top 10 uh, warmest May since 1950. You know we love a countdown at uh, Gauss Weather this. Doo -doo -doo. So um, here we go in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Da, 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 da. Okay, so uh, we're going to be counting out the top 10 warmest days and the autumns that uh, follow them. So uh, starting off at number 10 with 1970, the autumn of 1970 has high pressure south and low pressure there's a way to the north. We bring the wind in from off the Atlantic on a west or a southwesterly uh, direction, a little bit like that. Quite a mild autumn, I think, that one. Uh, driest in the south, wettest up in the north. At number nine, we've got 1998. So May 1998 was the ninth. Uh, warmest May on the CT, certainly since 1915. And uh, we can see that the autumn of 1998 was quite unsettled, actually. Let's change the colour. as a trough of low pressure over and to the east country, a ridge out in the Atlantic. And the jet stream doing something uh, a little bit like that. So a rather mixed autumn for 1998. Very wet October, I remember. And a rather dry uh, November, but also... Uh, a little bit cooler in November as well, a few cold stats. So we've got 2022, so this comes at the end of a long, hot summer, of course, and it is quite a wet autumn with low pressure out in the Atlantic, bringing the wind from west and from the southwest. So a warm and wet autumn for 2022. At number seven, we've got 2017. This is slightly cooler autumn, has a wet and cool September, something that we don't get very often these days. Does have quite a warm October, and we get the remains of Hurricane Ophelia, of course, turning the skies a Martian orange, or red, in um, October 2017. And then November actually has a few cold snaps and uh, a few cooler intervals. Overall, a pretty chilly autumn, with winds coming in from the uh, northwest quite a lot. At number six, we've got uh, 1964. Now, this is a relatively dry and quiet autumn with high pressure just out to the west of the country. And then we go top five. So the fifth warmest May for CT. Since 1950 is 2018. The autumn of 2018 is largely dry and quite mild as well, with high pressure tending to be to the east, low pressures out to the west, and a lot of the time we're drawing up the wind from a southerly type direction. Right, let's go number four. That's 1952. This is quite a cold autumn with a deep trough of low pressure over and to the east of the country. High pressure is out in the Atlantic, and winds coming in from a northeasterly direction. A few cold snaps in the autumn of 1952, also unsettled as well. I believe it uh, has uh, some early season snowfalls and an unusually cold September, I think, 
in uh, 19, um, in 1952 as well. Right, top three, number three, it's 2008. So, uh, this one with plenty of low pressure away to the east of the country. Again, we see that mid-Atlantic ridge. Might have been a bit of a trend within some of these um, analog years. Uh, Jetson down here. This is a rather cooler autumn in 2008. Has quite a quite an unsettled September. Has some very early snowfalls at the end of October across lowland southern England, which is quite unusual. And then a few cold snaps coming and going in November of 2008. At number two, we've got 19 92, uh, with again plenty of low pressure uh, to the east of the country, cool wet September, quite a cold, drier but colder October, especially the second half of October, with a wintry blast and really quite harsh overnight frost, and then generally quite a mild and unsettled November in 92, and then finally at number one, well I'm sure you guessed it, it's 2024. So, uh, May 2024 is the warmest uh, May on CET index uh, since 1950. In fact, there's only one May that's warmer way back in the 1800s. And uh, the autumn of 1994, there's Darth asking the question. Do -do -do. There's, uh, there's the dark lord of the sea, Darth Vader, asking the questions. What will autumn 2024 have in store? That's what we're trying to work out. Right, so let's put all of that together then. We sell all September's combined looking, following the top 10 warmest uh, maze. And it looks very unsettled, actually, with low pressure over and to the east of the country. High pressure blocking towards green as well. So, could we have a cool, wet September this year? That would be a turn up for the book, wouldn't it? This is how all October's combined are looking with uh, low pressure away to the north of the east, high pressure out in the Atlantic, and we bring the wind flow and jet stream on the northwest to southeast alignment. So, rather cool and unsettled, maybe, for September and for October. And then November, possibly with a little bit of cold snap potential here, though, has high pressure down towards Spain, which is a relatively mild wind direction, but the trough generally centred more towards the eastern side of Europe. A bit of a blocking signal as well. You could envisage at the very least a few cold snaps coming through with uh, quite a few of those Novembers. And this is how all autumns combined are looking following the top 10 warmest maze. It is an unsettled signal. Below average heights, low pressure away to the east. Above average high pressure. Above average um, heights, high pressure out to the west, I should say. So definitely an unsettled signal for these autumns and maybe a little bit of cooler or colder snap potential in there as well. Right, so that's the first set of analogs done. We can go straight on though. Have a look at England and Wales precipitation. Why don't we do that? So we can see that uh, May's England Wales precipitation came out at 91.3 millimetres. That was a 150 146% of long-term average. It was yet another wetter than average month, but uh, we have there for uh, for May's England Wales rotation. And so we're going to be looking at uh, autumns following May's with an England Wales precipitation range of 85 to 105 millimetres. We start with uh, the autumn of 1955 with high pressure out in the Atlantic, low pressure wave to the north east, and winds generally coming in from a northwesterly direction. So, largely dry uh, autumn there for 1955, lots of high pressure in control. It does get a little bit colder after a warm start. And then we've got 1958, which is another anti cyclonic autumn with uh, high pressure, this time more towards Scandinavia. I think it has a wet September though, and then the rest of the autumn, October, November tending to turn drier. We've got 1973, this one with a mid-Atlantic ridge out to our west and a trough of low to the east. Winds coming in from more of a northwesterly direction. So, drier but a few cooler intervals again in the autumn of 1973. Our next autumn with an England Wales precipitation range of 85 to, one, 85 to 105 millimetres is 1981. Oh, uh, this one has high pressure 
pressure down towards Spain, a bit of blocking to the north, and low pressure is away to the north of the northeast as well. few cooler intervals with that, cold snaps um, occurring in October, which is quite a cold, wet month. September's interesting, it has a very a dry start to it, first 10 days are quite dry and reasonably warm, and then it turns very wet, actually it turned into a very wet September in 1981, and also a wet November as well, with quite a bit of tornadic activity. We've got 1986, which has high pressure to the south and low pressure to the north. Winds coming in from off the Atlantic. This is quite an interesting uh, autumn because that's a very cold September. We saw 1952 earlier, which I think has a cold September. This one also with a cold September. Uh, last time I had a CT for September in the 11s was in 1986. The rest of the autumn is generally uh, really quite mild, though. And they've got 1993, this one with high pressure to the north and low pressure to the south, winds coming in from the east. The thing with the autumn of 1993 is that it's cold autumn, which you don't perhaps get from the analogue, but it uh, has a cold, wet September, a drier but quite cold October, and then we get some early cold intervals in November. Actually, there's uh, frost and snow from a Scandinavian high and easterly winds in November 1993. I would say 1993 possibly is our last properly cold uh, autumn. Although, of course, we have had 2010 and uh, one or two others since then. But uh, for like a consistently cold autumn season from beginning to end, I would say 1993. Probably the last time that happened very, very long time ago. We've got 2,000 next showing up after a very England and Wales temperature ratio of 85 to 105 millimetres. This one is a very, very wet autumn with low pressure parking itself over the top of the UK and Ireland. High pressure blocking away to the northeast, stopping the low from taking its usual track and instead just gets stuck over the top of Western Europe, exceptionally wet, autumn in 2000 with those incredible flooding rains. Then we've got a warm autumn for uh, 2014 with high pressure away to the east, low pressure is out to the west, lots of southerly winds in this autumn, uh, uh, that's one of our warmest autumns on record, and then lastly we've got 2015 with this rather bizarre sort of pattern of high pressure just covering most parts of Europe, low pressures out in the Atlantic, so that's uh, relatively, uh, well, well, it has quite a coolish September, actually, 2015, which you don't get from the analogues, last time we had a September seat in the 12s, I think, was 2015, um, but other than that, it's quite a warm uh, autumn, exceptionally warm, but also wet in November of 2015. Right, let's pull all that together then, finally. So this is how all September's combined are looking, following a May England, England and Wales precipitation range of 85 to 105 millimetres. Lots of low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. High pressure away towards the far north and northeast. An unsettled and uh, quite mild uh, month, for, or an unsettled month anyway, for September. And probably quite warm issue winds coming up from the southwest. But the main thing again, both sets of analogues interestingly showing quite unsettled September. No, um, All October's combined look like that. Low pressure away to the north and through the west of Europe. High pressure is out in the Atlantic. Could there be a little bit of cooler uh, snap potential there in the October? Maybe. And then all November's combined, following a May England weather of change range of 85 to 105 millimetres, much more anticyclonic and probably quite mild as well. That high pressure looks like it's ridging up from the south, actually, pulling the wind into a southwesterly. So probably quite a mild and dry signal for the uh, November's after a wetter signal for the Septembers and maybe a little bit cool snap uh, potential for the Octobers and all autumns combined following May England Wales trip chase range of 85 to 105 millimetres finally doesn't really yield a lot all uh, months are individual and unique so you can't take much away from that Right, we're done. That's our second autumn update done and dusted. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Thank you so much to uh, Rich and Shryan for all of the help on this video. And if you enjoyed the second autumn 2024 update, then please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. The next autumn update could have been two weeks' time because we've got a little video 
coming up next Sunday, which we're going to premiere, and uh, that is going to be the winter 2024-25 NAO forecast. Do -do -do. I said nothing about that so far. Um, so, uh, if you've been wondering, waiting, wondering where it is, it's going to be released next Sunday on the 30th of June. Um, and so, because of that, the next autumn update, the third autumn update, will be in two weeks' time. I say thank you to Richard Shrine for help on the video, and we're going to end it there. Hashtag Team Gabba, we're doing an amazing job. Thanks so much, both. So we're going to end it there. Um, as I say, there will be a 10 to 14 there, either as a video upload or maybe as a live coming up for you later on. I'll let everybody know on the socials a little bit later how the uh, foot and ankle is feeling, whether I'm up to uh, sit here for a live. But um, in any case, you know, there's more to come for you today. So uh, keep checking back to more. But for this one, or keep checking back for more. But for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.